Hello. Hello. How are you? -ins? That's y'all plus three, right? Yeah. You and. Yep, that's Y'all plus three. <laughs> we are well at the Penley household. Yep. Look tired. A bit of a long week and it's not over yet, but you know what? We're still happy because we live in what? Peace. And? Happiness. Victory. We live in victory. <laughs> that's right. But we do live in peace and happiness. Yep. But that don't mean there ain't little obstacles in life, right? That's a fact. But we overcome them, each and every one. What are we going to learn about tonight? Well, we're on Lesson 41, Crossroads See you at part the Crossroads, two. you won't be alone. I'm going to miss everybody. Miss my Uncle Chow <laughs> Yep, that one. Crossroads. We're, we're at a Crossroads. <laughs> we're at a Crossroads, so... <laughs> Let's see what we're going to learn about with Crossroads yeah, tonight. Our principle number seven is receive or reserve a daily time with God for self-examination, Bible reading, and prayer in order to know God and his will for my life and to gain the power to follow his will. So that is to reserve time to do what? To self-examinate, to read your Bible, and to pray. Yep. So we can know his will for our life. And that he'd give us the power to follow his will. Absolutely. That's important stuff. Yes. Our scriptural truth is, so if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. 1 Corinthians 10 and 12. That's important. That is important. Well, Bobby, when you were in yeah. school. Mm. <laughs> Did many, you... many moons ago. There's been many moons rising set <laughs> since Bob was in school. Did you ever play that game they call telephone where like you sit in a circle or a line and one person starts and they whisper something in your ear and you have to whisper the same thing to the next person yep. down the line, down the line? Sure did. And then when you get to the end, you find out if, if you guys messed up somewhere. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Yeah, it never got around where it weren't messed up. Yeah, that, that's true. And it's, it was always funny because you would start out with something, some normal sentence and then by the time that you got down the end of the line, it was something. Totally off. Yep. Usually funny. Because it's hard to remember that much going around and, and, and yeah. different account, different account, different account. And when you only hear it once. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you got to repeat from memory, and sometimes my memory's not too good, honey. Mine didn't, didn't always good no, to you. Yeah. Well, our lesson today. So the, there's, there's portions of life that it's life according to Bob. Through your filter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, our lesson today says, I think if you and I could only communicate that way, we'd never really get to know each other. That's true. Isn't it so much easier to hear directly from the person we're talking to? Mm-hmm. It is. It is good. You want to know you want to know something, go straight to the source. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's really hard, you know, and, and, and I think of that too, you know, whenever you have people that get an unfair shake in life. And, and you got all these rumors flying around about them, but then when you get to know them, you think, they're really nice people. Yeah. And, and you know, you may have heard they eat small children. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And it's just so many things can get misconstrued that way whenever, you know, if you'd went straight to the source from the get-go, you'd find that things aren't always what they seem. And they don't really eat small children. No. No, they, they, they eat... Children-sized meals at the restaurant, but somebody heard them say, "I like the child's menu," <laughs> and all of a sudden they go, "They eat children." Yeah, it's so easy to get things messed up that right, way. Right, right, and and uh, I don't know what it is. That's human nature, though, isn't it? Well, it says, "Think about your best friend. If you and your best friend never spent time talking in person or on the phone, you'd never really know what they were like or what they were into." And when you did talk, if one of you spent all of the time talking without listening to the other person, would you ever really know what they were like? I many, struggle with that one. Many of us complain that we never get to hear from God. Mm -hmm. We hear stories like Moses in the Old Testament where God spoke audibly, and we think to ourselves, if I could hear from God like that, I'd do whatever he asked. And the truth is, most of us don't get to hear from God in that way. So does this mean that we never get to hear from God? No. No, I think he's always talking. I just think we ain't always listening. Sure. I really do. Yeah. I said, if we agree that we can hear from God, how do you think he talks to us? 
Uh, the word says it's that still small voice. You know, I, I, I think it in another in another part it says that my sheep know my voice, and then others they will not follow. So it's that that uh, inner longing, that 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 inner voice, that still small voice that speaks to us. That mm -hmm. you know, when I'm going to go do something I want to do, and God goes, "Don't do it, Bob." And there's just something in you that says, "I can't do it." That's that. That's the Lord speaking to you, saying, "Don't do it." Yeah. Or it could be like a thought, and you know that it's a thought from God when you know it's not something that you would say to yourself. Yeah, I mean, and I've, I've explained it uh, this way to people before. Like if you are praying or talking to God or, or just whatever you're doing, and naturally, if you have like low self esteem and stuff, and then all of a sudden you hear a thought in your head, "Oh, I love you so much," or "You are so valuable." Now, you know that doesn't come from you because you don't think about yourself the way that God does. Mm -hmm. And that's happened to me before a lot. Yeah. That he gives us thoughts like that. Stuff that we wouldn't say to ourselves. And that's how we can know that he, he spoke to us because my sheep know my voice. Yeah. So he's saying, you'll know my voice. Mm -hmm. You'll know it's me, in other words, is what he's saying. You know, how many times is, have, have you felt like I need to go do this? And you know it's not an original thought you would have. Yeah. Like I've I've been I've been asked to go pray for people, asked by the Lord, and I'm like I don't even know them people. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, that's how I met my wife. That's true. It's it's the truth. That is the truth. And if I hadn't listened, I wouldn't know her. You know. Example. So He speaks to us. It's just, are we willing to listen? You know, it's it's like if I'm doing all the talking, I'll never hear Him. Well, I have to I have to battle that because I do talk a lot. I do like to conversate, but sometimes my conversations can be one sided. I just need somebody to hear. I, I don't mean to be that way, but I have to teach myself to listen to him, to listen for him. Mm -hmm. And every time I'll get in a spot taking showers, like I was telling my wife, every time I come out of there, I've got this new epiphany donut, mm -hmm. this new thing that God has spoke to my heart, or and so yeah. I think he's always talking. We just got to be listening. But I think that, you know, a lot of times we, we think that he's going to go, Hello, Hannah. I am up here holding lightning bolts and lightning rods and speaking very slowly and low so you can tell that I'm God. Well, I can testify that I've never heard him like that. <laughs> and I believe you can hear him audibly. I mean, I've had an instance like that it scared me to death, and it doesn't matter to me who believes me. Well, tell us about I it. Just, I just know for a fact what I heard, and it was a whisper. But uh, I was laying in bed one night, and, you know, you can feel this. You know how you, somebody walks in the room, and you can just feel like the... Feel the atmosphere change. Yeah, it's just yes. different. It just, you know, you'd look for somebody. Yeah. Well, I felt something, and I'd went to bed before everybody else, so I knew that, you know... Well, I rolled over and looked, looked around, nobody's in the room. So I was like, huh. So I rolled back over and I went to commence to going to sleep. And right in my ear, I heard, it's going to be all right. And I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I heard it, it's going to be all right. And I flipped over because it scared the thunder out of me. And I thought, who, who was it that done that? Mm -hmm. There was nobody there. And I couldn't understand for the life of me what he was saying. You know, why are you telling me it's going to be all right? I'm going to sleep. I know it's good. You know what I mean? But it, I know good and well why it says in the Word whenever an angel comes to visit somebody or something, they, the first thing they say to them most of the time is what? Fear not. You know why? Because it scares the thunder <laughs> out of you. You're like going, huh, what's wrong with me? I'm losing my mind. <laughs> but I knew about two months later as to why he was preparing me because I went through depression and anxiety and all these things that really disrupted my life, that really scared me to death. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the, the one thing that whenever it would get as bad as I can just recall it getting, I would hang on to that, it's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. So that helped me sustain enough to push through because I knew that he done told me it's going to be all right way before it ever happened. That's the one and only time I've ever heard an audible voice. And I tell people when I tell them, I'm going, look, it don't matter if you think I'm crazy. 
It doesn't matter to me if you think I'm wrong. All I can tell you is I know what I know. I'm like the, the blind man that Jesus healed. They're like, who did it? Why, when, where, why? He goes, look, all I can tell you is I was blind and now I can see. Yeah. Well, now the, all I can tell you is I was laying there in bed and that's what was said. That rhymes too. Our lesson says, just like in our friendships, if we don't spend time talking to and listening to God, how can we expect to hear from him? There are a couple of ways that we can practice hearing from God. It's prayer and Bible reading. Mm. Prayer is simply talking to God. Jesus spent all kinds of time talking to God, and he showed us how we can too. In fact, Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. How, how is praying like approaching the throne? Because... You used to, in the Old Testament, they had to have priests intercede for them, right? Mm -hmm. This is just an example, just what I think. And so when they prayed, they prayed to who? They didn't pray to God. They, they went to the priest, you know what I'm saying? Confession and all those things. Like They, they didn't feel like they had the access straight to God. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the religious folks. Yeah. And, or, or, and, and Jesus, whenever he died, you know, it says that the veil was rent. So that gives us direct access to God. So repeat the question you had. It says, how is prayer okay. like approaching the throne of grace? So we have the ear of the almighty God now. I mean, we did then, but we just they just didn't know. I just think of this as an example. Mm -hmm. Like they didn't believe they could reach the throne room themselves. Right. But Jesus came that we could. We can go directly to the Father. Yeah. But that's not the example it's talking about. Whenever I, I, I've always taught my boys whenever they say, Heavenly Father. You know, I don't want my kids going, Lord, thank you for the food. Look, when you say, Dear Heavenly Father, you have the ear of the creator of all that was, that is, and that will ever be. Mm -hmm. And where does he sit? He sits on the, uh, his throne in heaven. So if you're speaking to him and he hears you, you're doing what? Approaching, Approaching the, the throne. throne of grace. Yeah. You're saying God and he's saying what? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know where I kind of got off on the tangent on that veil <laughs> thing, but I didn't mean to. But that's, I think of that every time I think of now we can approach God. We can approach boldly. We don't have to, well, the, pri the priests say I can't be here, so. No, he's saying, you know, you're my child. You talk yeah. to me. I don't want my, my son's friend coming and telling me what he wants to talk to me, but I don't want my son to come to me right. and talk to me about it. Yeah. Well, it says, another way to learn to hear God's voice is by reading his word, the Bible. People have described the Bible as God's love letter to us, a roadmap, and a user's guide to life. Psalm 119.105 says, your word will be a guide to my feet and a light to my path. As we talked about last week, we're at this point where we could decide to move forward or we can stall and end up going backward into our old hurts, hang-ups, and habits. Reading the Bible daily will help us to move forward as we allow God's Word to guide our feet and light our path. No, he's talking about how do you know somebody unless you listen to them and get to know them. How do you know character of somebody? By getting to know them. Right, but if you just hear from everybody else, can it not get skewed? Yeah. If you only wait to get fed when you go to church or whenever you pull up a meme or somebody posts something on Facebook yep. or you see a TikTok, if you only got fed that way about God and his goodness, there's some messed up views out there. Yeah. There's some things that really hurt people and run them away from God. But if we want to know God, that means we want to get to know his character. Mm -hmm. We want to get to know what he did and when he did it. You know, how many times, have you ever asked your dad to tell you a story about your grandpa? Yeah. Because you wanted to know his character. You didn't just want to know uh, his name. You wanted to know what was he like. Yeah. Well, this right here tells us about the character of God. This right here tells us about what he did. Not only does it tell us about what he did and who he is, but it also tells us what we need to do. It is our roadmap. It is it is the rule and guide to faith. So if we want to know his character and just who he is, 
and what he does, right there it is. Mm -hmm. So we can know if something's of God because we know his character and we know what he wouldn't do. And so that's where we learn. Yeah. Sometimes when we think about reading the Bible, it can be a little intimidating mm -hmm. because it is a lot of words. Yes. There's a lot of books, a lot of chapters, a lot of verses. And sometimes we just don't know where There's to There's a start. lot of thee, they's, thou's, and arts in there too. Depending on which version you read. Right. But you know what I mean? That, that's a lot of people that they don't know. Yeah. The where forest thou go with, you know what I mean? Right. But you can read a translation. There's a new King James. There's there's other translations if you have a problem understanding it. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that if you'll apply even a King James, if you'll pray about that. Oh, yeah. I've, there's been a lot of scripture I've had to pray God open my eyes to. Yes. But if you want to know, it says, what is knock and it will be open to you seek. and you will find. Yes, I find it very helpful to pray before you read the Bible. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, they just they don't know where to start. And you can start anywhere you want to. But my suggestion would be to start in the New Testament. In the Gospels. In the Gospels, where it talks about Jesus and his good news. Mm -hmm. that, that's what the word gospel means, is that's good right, news. The good news. Um, the, the first four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they're, they're all the Gospels. They're the, the stories of... Jesus' life here on earth and what he did and the things that he taught. That's a great place to start. And then when you get done reading them, Acts is going to be so cool. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but the main thing is, is just to start and then keep reading. If all of this stuff you already know, just keep reading your Bibles. Make it a part of your everyday life. Set aside time every day for you and for God. Spend time praying. Don't just do all the talking, but give God some time to respond. And that's, that's my hardest part. That's the part that I struggle with the most when I pray. Um, I'll, I'll say what I need to say, and then I'll, I'll try to be quiet and let God talk, but I don't ever shut off my mind. Like, I'll start thinking about other things, and before you know it, I'm, I'm still sitting there, and I'm like, oh, well, it's time to go do something else. But I have to really focus on just being quiet in my mind and stopping my thoughts so that God can talk back to me. I think the world is geared to distract us. I think the enemy wants to distract us because if he can change the way we see things, then he can change the way we feel about them, how we respond to them, etc. right? Mm -hmm. So I think that we live in such a world that is full of distraction that our mind, even whenever we're not being distracted, distracts us. Because of all of those things going on in our mind. What I seen here, what I did there, what have I heard here. And and I think that it's important to push through those times and listen, you know. Well, it says once you begin this healthy habit, you'll experience a closeness with God. That closeness will lead you to trust Him more and to know Him more. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's good stuff. So, we had a crossroads. As to what we're going to do with all that we've learned thus far through the landing. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about crossroads. So you're you're at a point where if you were asked asking us, what do we do? You know, and, and this sounds so basic and standard, but read your Bible and pray. But that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Because he's going to speak through you, to you so much. You ever, you have a time where he spoke to you through the word? Yes, several times. Like directly? Yes. Not a roundaboutly? Yeah. You know, not <laughs> not that you need to go by or get some talents, you know what I mean? But for real, just really real, spoke yeah. to you. Yeah, he has. And I know a lot of people will say that, you know, the, the Bible isn't, uh, what do they call it, personal? The Bible's not. Uh, That's a hogwash. I know, it is, but, but yeah. people do say it. And, of course, I know the Old Testament is about the Jewish people. It's about, you know, God's plan using them throughout. And then the New Testament is about Jesus and then the, the birth of the church. Um, so I know that it's not about Hannah Penley. But there have been many times where I've been reading and, like, I will read something and it will just, you know, spark something in me. And mm -hmm. almost like a little lightning bolt in you. And, you know, God is telling me this. God is telling me that my problem that I'm having, this is the answer to it. Yeah. So, yes, I absolutely do believe that God speaks to us through the Bible. It's the living word. Yes, it is. It is a timeless book. Mm -hmm. It's like its words never age. 
because it's always pertinent and it's always applicable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I've had him, I, I won't even bail into how many times and what he <laughs> spoke to me. I mean, well, can I tell one story? Is it too late? We go sure. another time. Go ahead. When I got called to preach the word of God, I'd been running for years and I was up on a mountain turkey hunting on a Saturday. And I had a Bible on my dash that my grandmother had given me, and it had headers in it. And I couldn't even get out of my truck to hunt turkeys, y'all. They was gobbling. I was by myself, and they were down there just... And I'm going, they just want me to go down there and shoot them. <laughs> and I'm, I want to. But there was a heaviness that sat down on me that I couldn't get out of my pickup. I started bawling, Hannah. I was bawling. I'm going, the turkeys are gobbling. This is a good thing. But I knew that I was at the end of my rope with God, not the end of the rope that, that he didn't want me no more, but he was ready to deal with this where I had avoided it. And I remember bowing my head and said, God, what do you want from me? And I had the windows down, both my windows down on my little Ford Ranger. A wind blew through my cab. I kid you not. You can believe me. It's just, when I tell these stories, you can believe me or not believe me. I don't care. I know what happened. I believe you. And my Bible, the, the cover come open. I ain't saying that it just bloated open to the page, but the cover come open. And as the cover come open, it literally done the old flippy blow. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? And I look and the header said, Peter preaches to the multitude. I reached over there and I shut that thing because it scared the living daylights out of me. I go, you know, they say you talk, I seen the Lord and he talked to me. And I heard him and I said, yes, Lord. And I would, no, no, I was like, whoo, whoo. <laughs> and I went to bawling more, not just out of sorrow or heaviness, but out of fear. And I said, I can't do it. I just can't do it. I'm just a simple country boy and People expect more dirty jokes of me out of me than they do the gospel. Lord, I just can't. I, I, as I live and breathe and I sit here and stand before you, or sit before you, mm -hmm. it blowed open again. Those pages done the floppy dilly, and I was scared to look at it this time. I went. <laughs> and it says, Jonah runs. I went, I'm going to church tomorrow. I submit. And I submitted to preach on a Sunday morning, told that story. Everybody's laughing. I was not laughing. I was freaking out. I had my eyes that big around. Mm -hmm. I was bawling. And I preached my first sermon that next or that Wednesday. And I, you know, I hadn't stopped till now. But you can't tell me he, he didn't. He, he spoke to me through the headers, <laughs> not just the word, but the headers. And That's the awesome. thing about it was, is he used two headers of scripture that he knew I knew. I knew Peter preaching to the multitude on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And I knew what happened to Jonah. Yep. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he knew that I knew that. And he's like, hmm, yeah, so we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> I'll be there. And you know what? I still didn't go shoot them turkeys. I was done too excited now mm -hmm. that I had accepted it. It's like, it's funny how we'll run like the Dickens. And then we're finally, okay, you caught me, Lord. Then we're happy about it. He's like... You wear me out. You know what I mean? Like, what is your problem? So, yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's very cool. So, well, we're going to close. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I know it went over time, but you that's know, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm all about the time, right? Mm -hmm. We are going to read our serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the, cha the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Amen. Thanks yeah. for joining us. And with that, we are, we are done with the third book. And we are starting the fourth and final book next week. You for real? For real. We're done with we the get book. To, we're done with the book. We get to start. The There's book nothing but jotting pages in the back now. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll be. Hey, we did it then. You're done. We about thorough. We are.
Awesome. We'll see you next week. Love Have you a good guys. Week.